quarter percent as well uh, right now. Venu Gopal Gare is the managing director at Bernstein and he's, he's joining us right now to take some uh, questions. Uh, Venu, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, just, uh, you know, we've seen a fair bit of upheaval, right? Turmoil in markets over the last week and a half or so. And I just wondered your sense in terms of whether uh, it's like this kind of price action is likely to continue or you have a more sanguine view in the near to medium term. Uh, thanks, Prashant. So, yeah, I mean, the volatility uh, probably would have caught everyone by surprise, especially what happened in the last two weeks. And uh, the reality is that I would say that this is, while events will happen, events will end, there'll be new events which will get generated. So what I basically mean to say is that this year, brace for volatility. And a lot of volatility, in my view, will be orchestrated events because this is a pre-election year. Now, the reality is pre-election years, in fact, we had established as one of the themes in our early January sort of outlook reports where we highlighted that usually you don't tend to see returns in the market or a meaningful positive return in the market in the election years. Now, the backdrop to that is if you see past elections and look at what happens in terms of the disruption that gets created. If you rec recollect the previous election, we had a no confidence motion. We had, you know, uh, farmer distress related protests, you know, being created. And then you had these defense deal scrutiny. So, and of course, this is the backdrop of, you know, the challenges around ILFS bankruptcy and, and, and prior to that, you know, the fallout impacts of GST implementation and demonetization. So that was all of those agendas basically impacted, you know, during that time. Now, the reality is this time, we were expecting primarily inflation and the mid to bottom end of the pyramid not doing that, that well, probably as one angle for that. But what happened in the last two weeks suggests to me that potentially you could see more such, uh, you know, uncertainty uh, happen through the year. Now, volatility doesn't mean wait, uh, everything goes down. Volatility works both ways, you know, so it's going to be eventually, of course, not much return. Okay. Uh, I do want to, Venugopal, uh, good morning and thanks for joining in. Uh, I do want to, by the way, just uh, get our viewers to look at the market once because it's really all over the place. It hasn't made up its mind. The Sensex and the Nifty are under pressure, down about 200 points in the Sensex, but the mid-cap index is moving up. So there is some traction in the mid-cap index and a lot of stocks. m and Financial is now up 9% post its numbers. Paytm is up 5% post its numbers. Uh, Interglobe Aviation, Indus Towers, Vodafone Idea, all up almost about... Indus Towers and Vodafone Idea are actually up 10% apiece, so don't lose sight of that. Uh, so this market is rewarding uh, good data points and of course then you have the Adani Group stocks on the other side. Uh, Venugopal, what do you do with earnings now? I mean, after looking at the Q3 print, are you seeing more downgrades than upgrades? Because we've had a fairly decent run, right? I mean, the latest of course being SBI, ITC, Tata Power, all doing well. Uh, your thoughts? You know, I would probably say that uh, to a large extent, it was more a neutralish earning season. There were, you know, uh, certain sectors which are exhibiting positivity and certain sectors which are actually seeing, you know, weakish numbers. Now, the reality is since financials is the largest sector out here, and uh, that's where we've actually seen positive sort of numbers coming through across the board, uh, it probably, uh, you know, gives us feeling that things are okay, especially in terms of how the economy is shaping up. But then if you contrast it with, consumption-related companies, you've actually seen in general uh, weakish numbers, especially those related to urban consumption. In fact, we've, we've heard some rural consumption weaknesses as well in some results. So the reality is, uh, you know, between these two large sector, sectors, there's a pretty different, you know, uh, trend that we're seeing at this juncture. See, outside of this, e even from a point of view of certain sectors like industrials, even one of the larger companies essentially had a margin miss, for example, so it's all over the place outside of this no unique trend per se. So all in all, probably say this result season in general is not a major driver for upgrades. So I don't really see much of a change, you know, post post this numbers. And neither is it giving you any uh, directional trend for turning, you know, incrementally positive. Okay, so uh, there is no direction if you're looking at right now. But you know, there's one thing that we noticed in the budget this time. Infrastructure spending is there, but it's moderating compared to what we saw in the previous budgets, at least. Can you uh, explain more on that? And what would this mean for, you know, some of the infrastructure stocks or pockets that have seen a really smooth run up until now? Case in point, LNT. Yeah, so I would probably say that, you know, one of the uh, key aspects that I want to highlight on this is that 
the general uh, theory post the budget and all the commentary was primarily about a pretty substantial increase in capex the reality is actually capex is not accelerating in the budget capex is actually moderating in the budget that's the most important takeaway and the way to look at that is remember there are always these accounting aspects of a budget that one needs to be very careful of and if you were to think about just the infra part which accounts for almost 75 to 80% of the 10 lakh crore number that you see is actually going to be up only 20% year on year compared to 31% growth in the previous year and the reality is that this is happening primarily on account of the fact that you have these extra budgetary resources for example for railways has actually been cut and that has in theory been taken over by the capital account which is which is the budget right so it appears for example that railway capex is up 50% yoy but in reality it's up only 15% right so those are the anomalies so it's like it 20% if they are able to deliver it's an okay growth you know it's on in line with expectations but the challenge here is that if we were to sort of look at the state allocation which has been done now even if i look at last year only 70 odd percent of that is getting consumed so the challenge is if you're not able to consume that allocation which are doing to states then we'll end up at something like 15% growth which may which is not necessarily great at this juncture that's one part of the thing that i want to highlight the second aspect is remember private sector capex is not really it was expected to be great anyways this year we were thinking it will probably start looking good in 2024 25ish you know years or uh, calendar years but the reality is at this juncture with what we have seen in the last two weeks i think the banking system will be generally a bit careful about lending to private sector especially you know if it is linked to infra that is a reality so the heavy lifting has to be done by the government right so i mean even though private infra expenditure is not that great but it's still an incremental contributor right so overall i would probably say it's neutral to negative from an infra point of view relative to expectations when we head into this year so that's okay. that that would be the summary okay all right uh, hi morning venugopal uh, you know you also write that the budget has led to a net reduction in transfer to consumers could you explain that to us yeah so <laughs> so uh, the idea was not to basically get out all negatives from the budget but i wanted to put a realistic picture so think of how the world works right so there are two or three things we highlight here firstly if you look at the tax side of changes i think that's pretty welcome uh, but the reality is that that is the best the government could have done now they they have quantified that's basically a 5 billion dollar odd extra expense that they would have to incur assuming people you know are shifting uh, based on the expectation of shifting to the new tax regime who who is getting that right that's basically the taxpayers which typically let's say is a top households because they have incomes which are pretty much you know uh, you know uh, in some way salary incomes so that's a top end of the pyramid let's say the top 20 30 or 40 million households 5 billion dollar transfer but look at the reality in the last uh, 18 months we've actually seen a 150 billion dollar increase in product prices and we have quantified that in two of our surveys so this 5 billion dollar is not going to move the needle firstly you know it's a 150 billion dollar inflation impact on consumption or consumer product prices increasing the second part is that at the bottom of the pyramid subsidies have been reduced right and i'm not talking about fertilizer subsidy because that eventually will play up in food inflation assuming fertilizer their assumption on fertilizer subsidy is correct but let's put that aside look at manrega for example the allocation has been substantially cut yes that's great from productive you know a point of view but the reality is what was direct dole out to the bottom of the pyramid has actually been taken away right so net net if you look at the entire spectrum of the households in india this budget is not necessarily uh, you know uh, transferring more to consumers so that's that's the sort of uh, you know viewpoint that we have all right uh, venugopal we leave it at that thanks a lot for joining in and uh, all the best for the year to come well that is the word coming in on the market but